Oh boy. Um, we're going to talk about something today uh, for the express purposes of potentially um, trying to eliminate this from the video games media community. Uh, a member of the video game media, he's been around for a while, Mr. Nick Robinson, who was a former intern at Giant Bomb and is currently a video producer at Polygon, has been accused um, by several people of sexual harassment. And the accusations, um, apparently there's a lot more information floating around behind the scenes. A bunch of his colleagues um, are disassociating with him, uh, really sad they ever worked with him. Uh, unfortunately, no one at Polygon <laughs> is doing it, but we're talking about people, I uh, used to be on a podcast, you know, and, and pe members of that podcast have absolutely, uh, left the podcast. They want nothing to do with it. We're talking about, uh, Matt Kessler and, uh, Ben Pack, uh, you know, that they're, they're, they're gone. They, they don't want anything to do about it. Uh, they're gathering information behind the scenes as well. Uh, there's friends of the uh, accusers that are, are kind of verifying this. They've known about this stuff for a long time, but Nick Robinson was using his power in the media, his power of uh, social media and the attention that he has, uh, and his prominent position at a major publication to silence people um, and scare them into not saying anything, you know, because, oh, you know, things like he could destroy their lives and yada, yada, yada. He, he sounds like a monster. Uh, no, and I want to be clear, no one's accusing him of rape. Uh, they're accusing him of harassment, of manipulation tactics, of uh, lying to get consent, um, which, you know, we, we don't know what kind of manipulation in mind games he's using, but a lot of it has to do with his stature of power in the industry. You know, he's got like 84, 85,000 followers on Twitter. That might not seem like a lot to you, but that's a heck of a lot to me. I have like 400. Um, and for someone who's just a video producer, I mean, that's quite a lot to gather uh, for himself. And again, as I said, he was on a popular podcast. And I'm sure he's got a lot of interesting opinions about video games that people enjoy and they like his take on things. I mean, the guy didn't get popular and prominent in the industry uh, if he, by not creating content uh, that people don't care about. So he obviously made some good content. But uh, he... He made, I mean, we should, the warning signs were out there about this. Uh, he made a tweet way back in uh, March of this year where he said, no offense, but anyone who acts like they didn't jack off to Crystal from Star Fox Adventures is lying to you. Um, and a lot, you know, you could pass it off as a joke, but uh, apparently the people that know him uh, know that that's just who he is. This is that he truly believes this kind of stuff, this kind of filth. Um, and that wasn't enough to get him fired from Polygon. So I don't know how um, how he still has a job, especially now that these accusations are out there. And the reason I fell upon the story and decided to talk about it uh, really had to do do with it. It really all started. What, what got people to come out of the woodworks uh, was his extremely rude and extremely unprofessional public response to Overcooked on Switch. So this is where you see the Nintendo connection here, why it's relevant to Nintendo Prime. But I think this is relevant for all video game media out there, whether you're a YouTuber, a journalist, running a huge website, uh, running a, a huge YouTube channel, uh, doing Let's Plays, whatever the case may be, whatever you do. This is all relevant because this, is, this, is, this represents us. This looks poorly on us as content creators. Uh, and he's a video editor. I edit videos. I wouldn't call myself a video editor, but I edit videos. So like, this is all in the, sh you know, in, in the grand scheme of things we do here at Nintendo Prime. You know, it, I mean, basically, uh, it's insinuated, at least he insinuates that he contacted the devs or the team behind Overcook to talk about the frame rate issues, the known FPS drops that are happening in Unity in Overcooked on Switch. And they basically sent a really kind email and, and you're seeing it on the screen now. We're seeing what, what he tweeted of it, and it, it talks about, you know, uh, various ways that he can help them diagnose the issue uh, and, and diagnose in a way like what is exactly causing the frame rate drops. Is it the internal storage? Is it an SD card? Uh, you know, can, can you record video of this and share it to us, please? You know, and he's a member of the media, so a lot of these requests don't really sound all that. Thing. Like, like if I contact an indie dev uh, about issues with their game, um, I'm I'm a member of the media. If they ask me to go a little bit above and beyond um, to help them diagnose it, and it's really not that big of a hassle for me, especially for someone who's a video editor. Uh, here, here's how he summarized the whole thing in his tweet. He said, "Quote: Please record a video of our shitty port being shitty, so we can see how shitty it is. Extremely rude. Extremely insensitive." And a bunch of bullshit because 
it's not like the devs don't know that there's a frame rate issue, but maybe they haven't pinned down exactly all the causes for it. Maybe there is multiple causes of the, the frame rate dips. Um, and maybe in certain situations, they're not seeing the dips, but that doesn't mean that's the way it is when it's in public and not on a dev, a dev unit. So, and, and you're a professional video editor at a major publication. Them asking you to record a video that would take you all of i don't even know 10 minutes of your day to record the video and upload it to youtube um is, is ridiculous that that you're making fun of this process of them trying to get you're the one submitting the complaint they're trying to gather more information about the complaint that that's a standard procedure i mean th this email is a pretty professional level email uh response and he, it's just sickening and then you have this guy that named landon responding to him uh, and saying, actually, helping them is a better way to fix the problem than whining about how it's broken. Nick's response, hey, Landon, shut the fuck up. This is a professional member of the video game media. Uh, and that is what spurned uh, certain women, like uh, at Bloody, Bloody Honey with an underscore at the end on Twitter, uh, underscore Allie West, uh, you know, at XOXO Gossip Jita. Uh, aka Gita Jackson, to all come out of the woodworks and start um, essentially making these accusations about the sexual harassment public. Uh, basically, enough is enough. You're now publicly treating people like shit and getting away with it, um, not just treating people behind the scenes like shit. So... Uh, enough is enough. They they made a little hubbub. Uh, they didn't, you know. They they talk about manipulation. They, they don't get any to exact details, and they shouldn't. And we should not be contacting these people hoping for exact details because this is private stuff that affected their lives and their friends' lives and members of the media who are disassociating with the members of a podcast, Matt Kessler and uh, what whatever uh, Ben Pack who are leaving Pod Burglars. Or at least Matt Kessler for sure is leaving Pod Burglars. Well, Ben Peck, I don't know if he's leaving Pod Burglars, but he's disassociating from uh, this guy altogether because of these accusations and because uh, some of these people have known him for years and they're like, man, this this lines up with exactly their opinions of him uh, once he's off camera, once he's off the mic, uh, and and no longer just talking strictly about video games, uh, but how he is to deal with as a person. Um. I really don't want you guys doing an investigation into this. Uh, again, obviously it's accusations. A lot of he said, she said, except in this case it's a, it's a he said, she said, she said, she said, she said, she said. Plus he said, he said, he said, he said. And all of this is against his word, which he has not made a tweet since these accusations all came out. Um, probably at the behest of his lawyer. <laughs> um, I'm sure he's got some legal counsel that is telling him to stop talking about it. Uh, and, and to not make any more public remarks or not tell anyone else to fuck off and all this stuff. Because if there is going to be a legal case with this, uh, it's very obvious there is a mountain of evidence behind the scenes. Uh, and the fact that Polygon hasn't already retroactively apologized or made him apologize uh, for bringing this negative attention to Polygon, which Polygon has a bad reputation as it is. And the, the reason I'm talking about this uh, is because as a member of the media... This disgusts me. It disgusts me so much uh, that I don't want people who find out about the story, whether it's through us or through other means, through NeoGAF, through other YouTubers, uh, through Polygon themselves, if they ever talk about it, through Kotaku or whoever else, uh, I don't want them to look at this story as what the gaming industry itself um, creates, right? Obviously, there is issues at Polygon that allowed a man like Nick Robinson to come into power and allowed him to, um, you know, be abuse that power position that he has uh, on women. And that needs to be examined, and Polygon's going to have to do some deep look in internally uh, at figuring out how the heck they allowed such a monster uh, into their team and allowed him to be there for, for as long as he's been there and enabled him. But for my interactions with people at IGN, that's not how it is there. For my interactions with people at Kotaku, that's not how it is there. With my interactions with people um, at GameSpot, that's not how it is there. Or Game Informer. Or interactions I've had with any fellow YouTubers. I've never even seen YouTubers. Even YouTubers you would think are, are you know, 
don't respect women. I mean, heck, maybe you think PewDiePie doesn't respect women, but every interaction I hear about it is that's that's just not the case. Like he's just poking fun at the fact that people don't think he does. Um, when honestly, he he's a really nice guy, and that's the thing. Like most, I'd say ninety eight percent of the gaming media in the gaming press are pretty upstanding people, uh, regardless of what you think about what they bring to the table for entertainment. Uh, them the, as people, they are good people. This is an example that isn't. And if you're out there and you know of any stories like this, uh, I want you to not be afraid to do something about it. Because this guy used his power to keep people silent. And I'm not saying you need to make a big public hubbub about it, but get a lawyer. You know, contact his employer or, or, or her, her employer if it's a girl, you know, abusing her power. We can't i know we live in a country where abuse of power happens all the time but this is the kind of abuse of power that we cannot tolerate in the video game industry the video game industry is fighting an uphill battle right now um because there's been such terrible treatment of female developers and uh, female managers uh, throughout game development and we in the video game media have this unique ability to set a standard where that's not okay but we have to live by that standard we can't be elevating people uh, who don't uh, who, who abuse their power incorrectly, you know, to abuse women or or even elevate a woman who's abusing. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that that women there aren't women out there in power that abuse males as well. I mean, it happens. It, it's less frequent, but it does happen. Uh, no one should be able to abuse their power to sexually harass and harm other people, and I. I'm just really sickened by this story overall. Uh, but if you know of this happening anywhere else with any other member of the media, and, and even a member of the media, maybe it's family members, maybe it's uh, just your next door neighbor. Uh, I'm not saying make a big public hullabaloo, you know, like go on Twitter and, and start making YouTube videos about it. Uh, but don't be afraid to get help because people like this should not be allowed to get away with it. Um, yeah, that, that, that's really all I have to say on this. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Dance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, I mean, maybe you, maybe you found it informative. I'm a little sad about this whole thing, if you can't tell. Uh, if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button, subscribe for more, and, you know, folks, I'll, I'll just catch you in the next one.